everybody. I'm just a bird among the trees, and this is not the mushroom growing facility that we build at Olney. Um, we'll get to where I am and why I'm there uh, at the end of the video, but in this video we build our uh, experimental facility and we test whether it can support ex uh, mushroom growth by using ready-to-fruit kits. So let's see how that goes. Are you, are you a video on? Yep. Ah! Okay, I'm good. <laughs> so that you can actually stand on something other than a table. Um, how many clips do we actually have? A lot. We've got seven. Wow. Like this? Okay, I'll hold it down and then here's the binder clip. up. These are baby mushrooms. These are baby shiitake mushrooms. And you can tell that these are baby mushrooms versus this because this is squishy and these are very firm and you don't want to push on them too hard because it'll hurt their growth a bit. So with the, the white things are baby mushrooms. So these are what are called the pins. The pins are where you have a baby mushroom and start it. Once we have a pin started, remember what we did with, what we were talking about with the light? Why do the mushrooms need light? So they know the surface of the colony, the phototrophic. So we have the clear plastic so that they could sense the surface of the colony and we can see them. We are now going to cut the plastic off and do what's called stripping. So to strip off the plastic, we make a cut here, across here, down, down. And then it comes off like this. So we can be using like gloves or something to keep from contaminating. Alright. So once and we'll see this with the um, oysters so it, a little. Why does it count hollow? It's not very dense. So this layer on the outside, this is just made out of uh, sawdust. The brown layer it forms on the outside is protection against contamination. That's why we start them in the bags. It's also to keep in moisture. So once these finish their first fruiting, which will take a couple of weeks. Um, 
they're going to dry out considerably and we'll be able to soak them again to revitalize the block. But this sort of skin will protect it from contamination to a large extent. So, so now this is open and we can see the baby mushrooms. We're going to set these in our growing facility so we have higher humidity. This will tell, this will, depending on how they grow, it'll tell us whether we need more fresh air in there or whether we're re reaching high enough humidity. What's going on? Uh, he's measuring the roof so that we can like do one piece of plastic and cover this back. And it's probably gonna be well. It looks like it's gonna be like six by six. Painful by painful. <laughs> Yeah, use the seam to determine what is straight because this is a big old wrinkled piece of plastic. Shen, you have the other? Yes, I have. Alright, let's see. Got it? 
Alright, we have our first couple entries in the log book. And over in the world. Here. Things are looking quite beautiful. And we can even read the humidity from the outside. Yay! We just got back from a weekend away. And the shiitakes. Gigantic and gorgeous. Humidity's pretty low, though. This is mushroom. Mm-hmm. This mushroom. We could eat it. Yes, we can actually. Yes, we can. Yes. So these mushrooms have gone to the maturity, and actually, this one's a little past the point that's ideal. So you can oh, see you that, that. So the way you tell when a mushroom is ideal for picking is when the gills, these little lines, start showing. Ideally, they're curled in a little bit. The reason that these ended up unevenly unfolding... Because they hit the... Well, it hit the, it hit the edge of the block, but also these are a little dry stress, so they're opening unevenly. But actually... So we can take them out and take them off now? Most of them are ready to pick. So to pick a mushroom off of one of these blocks. Grab and twist, I'm guessing. That's, that's like the one that's basic. one way. So because these are a little bit stronger at the base, we're actually gonna use scissors so that we don't damage right. the column. So we take these scissors and why don't you hold that? And oh, go God. we go to the base. And just snip. And we have a lovely shiitake. First, tear the basket. Do you know how to tear a scale? Take those out. Okay. Take these out. Put the basket on top of the scale. No, no, it's not. Okay, put the basket on top. And you'll see that it's no longer zero. We then take the knob and we turn the knob until it is zero. And you want it to be lined up with the line. Not just from up high, but down here. And then... A big mushroom. Very big mushroom. All right, all the way to the base. And then snip. There you go. Okay, look at the mushroom. Mm-hmm, that one is. Too much of the stem there is because the stem stays behind and can end up being infected by mold, and that can be an entrance point for mold into the colony. Let's get another one. Now, this is a good example of the reason that these are this is the dry stress. So, see how the cap is cracking? It looks really cool, but it does mean that the colony is being stressed. We have too low humidity, so we need to make extra special careful sure that we're spraying down twice a day, okay? Even though this one is big, if we look up underneath here, look, 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 very close. So all of these are still baby. They don't have their gills showing. So everybody come here close. The size of the mushroom doesn't matter. You can have a cap that th is this big that's mature and you can have a cap this big that is still a baby. So as long as the gills are not showing, it's not mature yet. So these ones will get bigger. Oh, Whoa. so make sure that you get down around the base. A big mushroom. So this one here and this one here. We can see that they're just starting to open their cap. They're still curled under and there's part of the cap that we aren't seeing the gills on that's not ready to pick yet. So I allow 
let the shiitake blocks to soak until I first saw pins and it's been a few days and second flush is coming along beautifully and in addition baby lion's mane look at these little fuzz balls They're Hmm? Will we, eat it? Dog like? we could eat yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yes. One, yeah. It's one kind of petting my dog. Yeah. Yes. So the way you tell, the way you tell when a lion's mane is ripe, it's not by the size of the cluster. Uh, Show, can you hold this? We can see the length of the hair. So over here, we have one that has very short fur. And here we have one with much longer fur. So the long fur ones are ready to be picked. Do I grab no it? knife. Do I twist? So just, yep, wrap your hand around it and twist gently. And it should pop off. See? Just like that. That's freaking cool. Um, that one can grow a yeah, little so bit like more. Here, right? So that one can grow a little bit more. No, so um, we know. could. Is this from? Or is the reason why this is not like down here because of the water hitting it? It may be that like because water is directly dripping on these, which is sort of suboptimal. That that's the reason they're getting that this pink. So we're gonna put this guy back and we also have shiitakes that are growing pretty well for their second flush, but they are not ready just yet. And this is what it looks like when your shiitakes get dry stressed. It's not ideal, but it sure does look pretty. Haha. <laughs> oh shoot, that's good. I'm out. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. This oh, mushroom. I see it. I see I, okay, I'm filming, but I can't see it on the camera screen. I don't know if it can actually see this, but it's spores. This mushroom got a little overripe, so it's producing spores. That's how they spread themselves around. They start new mycelial colonies. Woohoo! Okay, uh, well, uh, that's it. Uh, I think this one already put tape. Yes, it is ready to take. Okay. So you take it off if you need it to, like, to reproduce. Yep. Haha. Uh, where is the scissors? And then the second basket. Put this one right here. This one. These ones, I would say, are ready. All right, Nathan, grab one. Is that one ready? Yep. That one's ready. So it doesn't matter what size they are, it's the length of the teeth. So the hairs, as far as I can tell, they're fine and the reason they're like that is because of the chlorine that's falling on them. So that's Yes. The little nubbins, uh, they're all, yep, those are all ready. Okay, so those ones will leave till tomorrow, but since we're going on break, we'll have to pick them anyway, but let them mature overnight. Woohoo! What about, what about over break? Over break, we're gonna leave them, but we're gonna have all of the mushrooms that are fruiting now picked off. I can come pick them. You could, and then you can eat them. Really? They would be yours to have. If you really? can, I yeah, can. sure. I can. If you if you come if you come and pick them, then they are yours to have and do with as you will. You are, you are the caretaker. I can also water it. Too. Yep, that would be good. So how can I eat it? Is that just put it in hot water? I will show you in a minute. Okay. We will. I'll give you a cooking demonstration with them. Okay, cool. um, uh, culinary class, mushroom uh, culinary class. Free of time. Oh uh, yeah, we're uh, <laughs> yep, that's a thing. If we have class tomorrow, if we have class tomorrow, then we can cook them tomorrow. Do It'll I have be... class tomorrow? Do you have class in the morning? Or yep. Okay. Um, this one and this one are good. Yeah, Leave this one morning. and this one you can pick as well. 
Yeah, if we have it in the morning, then we should probably have it. Yep. Um, Mushrooms ready for the culinary arts class. Waha! Stella, what is that? I will cut your finger off. No, we are not cutting each other's fingers off. Okay, all right, chill, chill, chill. Oh my. Life is vibing. So we had a successful initial experiment. We fruited out two different species of mushrooms, our shiitakes and lion's mane. And um, the primary issue that our facility ran into was we ended up dry stressing our mushrooms a bit. So controlling the humidity in our facility is going to be the thing that we need to really keep an eye on going into the future. But we were able to su successfully produce mushrooms and ended up using them in several school lunches and dinners. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is, well, obviously not our growing facility, not the growing facility we built. I am currently at my parents' mushroom farm, so this is where I learned to grow mushrooms, and actually the blocks that we used in this experiment are from right here. Um, we obviously aren't going to be doing mushroom growing anywhere close to this scale, but we can move on to the next stage of our experiment. So the next stage of our experiment that we're going to be moving into from here is actually inoculating our own mushroom blocks at Olney. Um, this is going to be quite a challenge because we don't actually have any sterile facilities in which to do that, which means that anything from a mold spore to a bacteria can get in there and grow on your block instead. So if we are able to viably inoculate our own blocks, then we can start properly growing mushrooms at Olney, which would be cool. <laughs> um, also moving into the future, seeing as I'm uh, at my parents' mushroom growing farm, after that video I might be showing you guys um, how things sort of work on an actual mushroom growing farm and we can sort of compare and contrast the um, jerry-rigged version <laughs> that we did versus how it's done on a proper mushroom growing farm. But all that rambling aside, I will be seeing you in that next video. Bye! You wanna see where blocks are born? This is where blocks are born. Oh look, a baby mushroom. Ah.